Um, welcome to my talk. Uh, I titled it What the Hashtag Hacks in OKLCH, which is kind of ambiguous. Um, I, I'm basically going to talk about modern and old CSS color functions and then move on to color spaces and what all that means. Uh, and to begin, I'm going to start with good old trusted hacks and RGB. Um, yeah. So if you've done CSS, you know both of these very basic. We have hashtag badass and the RGB equivalent, which gives us that lovely puke green color. Um, now, in the recent CSS versions, we now have a new notation, which I will use from now on. Uh, you can now write, instead of using commas, you can now just use spaces and separate alpha with a slash. So you have red, green, blue, and then slash alpha. Um, then next up, we have HSL, as you may also know. Um, this one, unlike RGB, doesn't use red, green, and blue values. Uh, it has hue in degrees from 0 to 360. Uh, and then you can provide saturation and lightness and alpha. Um, saturation and lightness, I think, are, are pretty um, self-explanatory. So saturation is how much color there is and lightness is how bright it is. But the hue is a bit weird and non-intuitive at first, because what do degrees mean? Uh, well, it refers to the color wheel, as we see on the picture here, uh, which goes from 0 to 360 degrees, uh, red being 0, yellow being 60, and so on. Uh, now, both hex RGB and HSL operate on the sRGB color space, but what exactly is that? Well, sRGB has some amount of color that you can display with it, um, but in modern days now we can have wider color gamuts, as it's known, such as P3, which I'm guessing this display doesn't really support because these look the same, but... Um, if you were to compare them on a P3, DCI P3 supported monitor, like the right one would be slightly more saturated looking, um, which you cannot get with RGB and HSL. So if you wanna go into wider color gamuts, you can technically use the color function and provide the, you can tell it which color space you wanna work with. For example, the P3 here. And then C1, C2, and C3 basically refer to, uh, refer to the coordinates in that color space, Say, similar to RGB, but not entirely the same. Um, now, the thing with these is, for example, if you want to make a color theme on the, for, for example, for a front end, it maybe isn't the most intuitive to, for example, say, oh, I want to have a slightly desaturated version of this color when I when I hover off it or something, because you're dealing with RGB values, so it's not the most obvious wh where to go, uh, unless you use HSL, uh, which works. Um, but if you want to go to something modern that supports more color, like white color gamuts, we, go, we get to the title of the presentation, uh, OKL OKLCH, um, which at first glance looks very similar to HSL. So we have and kind of importantly, perceived lightness, uh, chroma and hue. Um, chroma, chroma is basically the same as saturation. Hue is same as in HSL, uh, except it's using different values. It's not in degrees. Uh, it has its own uh, numbering system. Uh, but the difference here is the lightness, because in HSL, the lightness does technically refer to how light a color is. But that's not always consistent if you go through different hues through the color wheel, uh, which is why OKL, OKLCH is better um, because it maintains lightness throughout. So it's the way we perceive lightness with our eyes instead of um, just some arbitrary value for a color. Uh, and it operates in the OKLAB, OCLAB um, color space, which is modeled to basically represent all colors visible to human eyes as opposed to just some set of colors that machines can reproduce. Uh, and when I mention perceived lightness, uh, we can now compare HSL to LCH. So 
the order here is mixed up because we have hue, saturation, and lightness, and then LCH, it's slightly flipped. Uh, but the important thing is uh, we can see lightness in both looks the same and chroma looks the same uh, between saturation and chroma. But then in HSL, as we go through hues, we can see that they're not very consistent in terms of lightness. So you go from dark to brighter to dark to brighter, depending on the angle of color you have. Whereas in LCH, as you go through hues, it's much more consistent in terms of lightness. Um, the Why that's important is if we take exam for an example, for example, buttons. Uh, in HSL, if you were to keep the uh, lightness and uh, saturation values are the same, but just rotated the hue, you would get into like low co contrast problems, which can lead to issues in the front on the front end for like user experience. Whereas in OKLCH, OKLCH, um, it's much more consistent in terms of lightness. Um, another benefit is when we talk about gradients, which was also a working title for this presentation. Um, in LCH, when you have gradients, they sometimes they usually look nicer than if you were using HSL or RGB uh, transitions, just because of how the color space works. Uh, now I've been talking about color spaces and color gamuts, uh, but what is this really? Um, in general, we usually see a representation like this. Uh, we have a mapping of colors we can see, but our computers and displays and phones cannot reproduce all of them. Uh, most commonly, um, we had the sRGB color space, which is the brightest here. And as we can see, even if you go up to DCI-P3, which I also mentioned, we already cover, I think, roughly 30% more colors. Uh, don't quote me on that one. Uh, and then, of course, as you go up to Adobe RGB or REC 2020, you get even more possible color reproduction. Uh, now, yeah, um, the thing with OKLCH OK OK is, as I mentioned, it's mapped to represent all colors that we can perceive as humans, which means that if you have a regular display, at some point when you go through some values, you stop noticing differences between colors because you actually run out of like color space. You, your monitor cannot reproduce these colors. Um, and I have a demo here as well. If I'll just use this one. This is, if you're used to HSL color pickers, you know, you usually get the square with the colors and then you set uh, saturation and, and lightness. But here we can see uh, as we go through, uh, for example, different hues or lightnesses, the the chroma part like changes based on what's available. And when I mention color spaces, I currently have selected the sRGB color space here. And then you can go beyond into DCI-P3, for example, which as we can see is not available on this monitor. So nothing really changes in terms of this. The, the browser just falls back to the closest sRGB value. Um, Yes, but I okay. I think I think we're good now. Can we can we get the yes? So uh, moving on, I don't see what my next slide is for some reason. Yes, uh, and I when I I also mentioned that modern monitors have like limited color uh, reproduction capabilities. So when you go shopping for a new screen, you may see the color gamut listed in percentage of like what the display can reproduce. Um, so I, I took an example of one that I have that now I think Victor has, uh, which covers like 99% of Adobe RGB and 98% of DCI P3. Yes. Uh, I mean, ba basically if you do professional work with color, you want as much color reproduction as you can. Uh, so I hope this helps you now understand at least what these numbers mean. Uh, it basically the amount of color from that color space you can reproduce. Uh, and since we have a bit more time, I have another thing that will probably break my presentation. 
uh, I wanted to see if we can do the daily hex call. If any of you knew, know what, what Wordle is, um, we have hex call. Yes. The, the idea here is we have to guess what this target color is. So if anyone has any idea where to start, uh, we could, although I, I can see it's it different between that and that. I think that's a bit brighter. But yeah, um, D, are you sure? That's a bit bright. Maybe, maybe, maybe 90, do we have any green or blue? I don't know, possibly. 32, 17, let's go. We are way off. Well, uh, the, the, luck, the good thing with uh, hex, hex code list, it gives you, uh, like, it tells you how far off you are. So I'm guessing th this is like a bit lower, so it might be 76, 27, 29. We got more close. Uh, so it's 84, 20, 28, 27. It's much lower than that. Okay. Two C twenty nine. No. Oh, oh. Let's do eighty one. No, no, because it's lower. Uh, eighty one twenty to be two eight. Hey, we didn't do it. <laughs> Almost, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. I I hope any of this information will be useful when you shop for monitors from now on or use, make CSS color themes and stuff. Um, it's I always was interested in in CSS and colors. So, yeah. Thank you. With with only minor technical difficulties. Any questions for Tomash? Yeah. Any questions? What if we write the new notation and the browser doesn't support? Uh, I think all browsers now support this as part of the CSS color module level four, I believe. Um, but otherwise, I think the browser also falls back to the old notation. So probably we need to write it two times, just in case. Uh, possibly. I would, I would have to double check. I'll check. Thanks. Yeah. So for your uh, main screens where you have some uh, gradients, what are the codes? Is it the new one? Is it based on uh, uh, the OK low calorie high fat? Oh, I, 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 I haven't, I haven't sadly had a use for gradients in a web app in a while. So, uh, it's, I guess it's more a concern if you write color themes, like theming in an app, um, which I'm not that experienced with, but I assume if you want a really robust system, you could go with, okay, okay, LCH. Uh, yeah, I've, I've used color systems with just like hex codes, which ended up needing a lot of uh, different variables with specific hex codes, which, yeah. There, there's also a lot of new, like, functions you can use with colors to, I think uh, there's upcoming support even uh, for, um, you can you can create things from a color. So for example, you can you can say from this color, add some chroma or lightness or, or saturation and stuff like that. So you can very easily manipulate uh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think about accessibility. Uh, let's say I want I might need some contrast uh, for a button, perhaps, right? And then I'm rotating the color of a button around this hue. Uh, does it uh, retain the contrast, or that's that's the that's the benefit of OKLCH. Um, it the perceived lightness is always the same. So if you rotate the whole color wheel, it's, it should always have consistent contrast. Whereas if you had HSL, you might go from a 
blue where the contrast is okay to a yellow where the contrast just falls off. Uh, so yeah, the idea is that it's more consistent throughout the the colors. Um, you were showing the example with the website. How did the browser ex exactly know like what colors your screen supported? Uh, I think that's a f that's what the it's up to the browser to support colors, and then I think with possibly JavaScript you can you can check. So it was actually the browser not supporting those ranges. That's why it. I I, I guess it's in multiple stages. It's first on the OS level you have what display you have, so the OS knows which color, like for example if you have like 10 bit color, 12 bit or 8 bit, it knows that, and then it goes to the browser, um, which then I guess can read from the OS and then down passes down the support to your JavaScript and stuff. Uh, that's why, um, for example, the, the demo I had uh, with the color picker, if you open it in Firefox, it defaults to only showing sRGB because Firefox, I think, still doesn't support like wide color gamuts. But if you open it in Chrome, it supports the wider color gamuts, um, which, yeah, then shows more color. And what about Safari? I didn't check, but I, I think Safari was one of the first ones that supported this stuff. Uh, at least according to some articles I read, like, oh, this is only supported in Safari. Uh, but now I think all of them have like baseline support. So thank you. That's, that's it. One more applause for Tomas.